أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا ما يهدي الله فلا مضل له وما يدلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد يقول الله تعالى في القرآن العظيم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وعباد الرحمن الذين يمشون على الأرض حونا وإذا خاطبهم الجاهلون قالوا السلام صدق الله العظيم All praises of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We glorify him and we thank him for his many bounties and favors upon us I testify that there is none to be worshipped but Allah. He is alone and he has no partner. And I testify that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his servant and final messenger. Ibadullah, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us in the Quran about the qualities of the worshippers of our Rahman, the worshippers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the very first one, he says, وَعِبَادُ الرَّحْمَانِ الَّذِينَ يَمْشُونَ عَلَى الْأَرْضِ حَوْنَوْ وَإِذَا خَاتَبَهُمُ الْجَاهِلُونَ قَالُوا سَلَامًا And the servants of Allah those who walk modestly on the earth and when they are being addressed by the ignorant they say peace they do not indulge in the same type of conversation except that they wish those who have speech that are not good speech that makes people become either uh, 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 haters or people becoming individuals that will cause harm to others, they just wish them the best and they walk away. In this surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions many qualities of the servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Today, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, because of what we are experiencing around us, I wish to remind you and remind myself that yes, indeed, words matter. And so we have to be very careful as to what we say and how we say it. We may have heard people talking about how, how words matter and in a very different context. Today we will look at it from the Islamic context and what Allah and his messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tell us with regards to this tongue that was provided to us. 
Beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, a believer does not taunt. A believer does not revile. A believer does not curse. Nor does he abuse or talk obscenely. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is reminding us that believers do not use this blessing of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, this tongue of ours, to taunt or to revile or to curse or to abuse or to talk indecently. And so we need to be careful that what comes from the tongue promotes love and not hatred. Wise words. We need to be People, whenever we say something, to make sure that its impact on others, it's a good impact. There shouldn't be any type of negativity. And so even in, in correcting one another, we, we do it privately instead of doing it publicly. Because in private, it brings beautification to what we want to correct or what we want to say. In public, it brings humiliation. And so the wise words, to give advice to your brother in private, is to beautify him and to give advice to him in public is to humiliate him. Quite often we don't like to advise people in private. We like to say it in public. Let us get into the habit of we see something wrong then we need to talk privately. You know, I see very often on, on social media, someone posts something or someone sends an email to many people. There may be something that you want to correct about it. But instead of looking at the person who sent the email or posted it on social media and try to uh, co connect with him privately, you do it publicly, and then it becomes an embarrassment. Instead of beautifying the person, now you have humiliated the person. We always need to look at what Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said. He said that Allah is kind, Allah is good. And so Allah loves kindness and Allah loves goodness. Reminding us that everything that comes from us must promote love, compassion, kindness. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam reminded us that a man utters a word pleasing to Allah without considering it 
of any significance for which Allah exalts him in ranks, in Jannah. We know that people will be in different stages. They will be in different levels in Jannah. And so the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is saying that you say something pleasing to Allah without considering it of any significance. And so Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala will exalt you in ranks. Another one speaks a word displeasing to Allah without considering it of any importance and for this reason he will sink down into hell and we know people can get into the lower level of the hell fire and so Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam is reminding us that even if you think there is no significance to it, there is no importance to it, words do matter. And so we need to be careful as to what we say. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, it, it, he also said, the fate of a servant is not upright until his heart is upright. And his heart is not upright until his tongue is upright. A man will not enter paradise if his neighbor is not secure from his evil. Sometimes we say things that make people they take a distance away from us they don't want to be close to us and so prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam has informed us that this tongue is very significant and we need to make sure that we keep it upright. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, the companions of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, especially among the Khulafai Rashidin, they also gave advice with regards to this tongue of ours. Uthman ibn Affan, may Allah be pleased with him, said, When a person's tongue becomes quiet and friendly, then his heart becomes pious and clean. The heart, the seat of everything. Uthman ibn Affan, he is saying that protect this tongue and it will help to keep the heart pious and clean. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, we look at the traditions of our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he tells us about initiation, initiating good things. He says, Man sanna sunnatan hasana, falahu ajruha wa ajru man amila biha ila yawmil qiyama. Wa man sanna sunnatan sayyia, fa'alayhi wizruha wa wizru man amila biha ila yawmil qiyama. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, one who initiates a good thing and it can be that initiation can be true speech one who initiates a good thing he will have the reward for it and the reward of those who follow him in doing it until 
the day of judgment. And one who initiates something evil, and that initiation can also be from speech, he will have the sin of it and the sin of those who follow him in doing it until the day of judgment. And so, even though we are being told in the Quran, Wala taziru wa ziratun wizra ukhra, and no one shall bear the burden of another one. Whatever you do, you are responsible for it. But yes, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, words do matter. And your words can make someone loving and kind and compassionate, or your words can make someone very vicious, very evil. So we need to be very careful as to what we say, how we use this tongue of ours. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, a pleasant word is an act of charity. When you speak good things, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says that you are performing charity or you're giving charity. Once a man insulted Khalid ibn Walid. May Allah be pleased with him, Khalid ibn Walid. He turned to the man and he said, it is your scroll of deeds, so fill it with whatever you wish. He didn't argue with the man, he didn't uh, say things to him that made him place himself in the same position as that individual. But he said to him, it is your scroll of deeds, so you can fill it with whatever you wish. And so we need to really control ourselves. We may be angry at times, but we need to control that. A man came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he said, Ya Rasulullah, counsel me. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, La taghdab, do not be angry. And again the man asked and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam repeated it several times. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it is reported by Uqba ibn Amir, may Allah be pleased with him, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was asked, Ya Rasulullah, man naja? How can salvation be achieved? How can we have success? And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Amsik alayka lisanak, waliyasa'aka baytuk, wabki ala khati'atik. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Control your tongue. First thing, you want success? You want salvation? He says, control your tongue. Keep to your house and weep over your sins. There are so many people who make mistakes in the world today. And it's like if they have never done anything wrong. It's always some other person. The blame goes to another person. 
if we look at ourselves, then we, we, we would realize how much we need to correct our own selves. And so Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is advising us if we want salvation then let us control our tongues. Try not to sit idly sit in places where you will encounter these type of talks where you, you, you want to participate and, and you want to be involved in something that you ought not to be involved in. So he said, keep to your house. And yes, we do make mistakes. Be sorry for them. Weep over your sins. Don't be proud of them. Try to always speak that which is good. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, Man kana yu'minu billah wal yawmil akhir falyakul khayran aw layasmut he who believes in Allah on the last day, let him say that which is good or remain silent. You don't have good things to say, just don't say anything. So many people have got themselves into hot water. They have, be, they have got themselves into so much trouble because they, they want to speak and they speak nonsense, foolishness. And we see it not only from the ordinary people, we see it from leaders. And so my dear brothers and my dear sisters, let us take advice from Ali ibn Abi Talib. May Allah be pleased with him. What did he say about the tongue? He said, the tongue is like a lion. If you let it loose, it will, wound, it will wound someone or it will harm someone. And so we need to be very careful that we control the tongue. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran, Ya ayyuha alladhina amanu attaqu Allah wa qulu qawlan sadida O you who believe, fear Allah, be dutiful unto your Creator. And when you speak, speak the truth. Say things that are directed to that which is right. Don't just try to speak the truth. Speak the truth all the time. For truth, if we look at the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it leads towards goodness. And goodness leads towards Jannah, towards paradise. And that is what we want. We want Jannah, we want paradise. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, listen to the advice that Sufyan Athauri, may Allah be pleased with him, Give to Hatim, may Allah be pleased with him. He said, I shall tell you 
four things which people are generally guilty of. Number one, criticizing and accusing people. And he said, when you criticize and you accuse people, this brings about negligence in the execution of the laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number two, jealousy for the progress of a Muslim. When you are jealous about the progress of your fellow brother or sister, this leads to ingratitude. Number three, accumulation of haram assets. When you accumulate things that are haram, he says, this causes forgetfulness of the akhirah. You don't think about hereafter anymore because you think that whatever you have, this is all that you need. And so you have everything that you need. And number four, he says, to become careless regarding the warnings of Allah and to lose hope in his promises. When you become careless with regards to Allah's warnings, and you lose hope in the promises that Allah has given to you, then this leads to kuf. It leads to disbelief. You lost hope, you don't care about your creator, and so you don't have belief in him anymore. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, again, words do matter, and so, we have been hearing so much about it in these last couple of weeks. There are those who have committed crimes. And when we look at why they have committed these crimes and it's being evaluated, it goes back to what people have said. And there are those who have committed crime and they are bluntly saying, yes, we committed such crimes because we were influenced by the words of individuals. There, is, there, there are people who wanted to burn a masjid down. They wanted to burn an apartment complex in which Muslims are residing. And their attorney is petitioning for them saying that they wanted to do such things because of what they heard during the 2016 election campaign. And so, yes, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, even though we are responsible for our own actions, Islam teaches us that words do matter. And so we need to make sure that our words promote love and compassion and kindness and not promote hatred and enmity and dislike for others. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us good in this life and good in the life hereafter. And may he save us from the torment of hellfire. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullaha li wa lakum. Wa li sa'ir al-mu'min al-mu'minat min kulli dhamb. Fa astaghfiru innahu huwa al-ghafur. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, was salatu was salam wala sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi was habihi ajma'in. Ridwanullahi alayhim ila yawmiddin, amma ba'd. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, Abdurrahman, uh, Abdullah ibn Am ibn al As, may Allah be pleased with them, said, 
لم يكن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم فاهشا ولا متفهشا وكان يقول إن من خياركم أحسنكم أخلاقا عبد الله ibn عم ibn العاص he said that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam neither talked indecently nor did he listen to indecent talks. Instead, Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to say, "The best of you are those who have the best manners." The best of you are those who have the best manners. Ananas radiallahu an qal Anas, may Allah be pleased with him, said The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said Ma kana al-fuhshu fi shay'in illa shanahu وَمَا كَانَ الْحَيَاءُ فِي شَيْءٍ إِلَّا زَانَهُمْ Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said when you use foul language when you mix it with anything it mutilates it it, 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 it dilutes it it makes it impure it makes it lose its beauty And when you use decency, haya, with anything, it beautifies it. And so just make sure that with everything that you do, there is decency, that there is that concept of haya, modesty, shyness, because it helps to beautify whatever you say or whatever you do. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to be from among those who always speak that which is good. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to protect our tongue. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us good in this life and good in the life hereafter. And may he save us from the torment of hellfire. لقد أمرنا الله سبحانه وتعالى في القرآن العظيم حيث قال إن الله ملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم على عبدك ورسولك محمد وأرضى الله من خلفائه الأربعة أبي بكر وأمر وأثمان وعلي ونستة الباقين المبشرين بالجنة وان سائر الصحابة وان تابعين ومن تبعهم بسان لا يوم الدين اللهم عز إسلام والمسلمين اللهم نور قلوبنا بالنور الإيمان وثبت قلوبنا على دين الإسلام ولا تجعل في قلوبنا غلا للذين آمنوا وربنا إنك رؤوف رحيم عباد الله إن الله يمر بالعدل والإسان وإيتاء ذي القربة وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والباغي ذكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروا الله على نعمه واشكره على آلائه ولذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تسنون أقم السلام